So let's just say the projection is a five minute projection. Someone enters in and then someone comes in three minutes after the first person has already started. The person who comes in second doesn't get that experience of it's an empty room and then suddenly everything comes out. Yeah, because I mean, there's someone there already. Yeah, that's gonna happen. I think that's, I'm willing to accept that as something that will happen and you just have to wait your turn because it's only you know three minutes of an experience but I, I really do think that over the course of a day that there's time for that and it is similar mm -hmm. to the audio tour that you know the, yeah uh -huh. is there is there room for it to um, become something that is is slightly um, going towards that kind of unique experience where you can kind of enter something into it that is um, somehow responsive so that it uh, because the, the putting the mask on is, is, a, is a great way of kind of like then then having the images yeah. develop in front yeah. of you but um, is there a way to add an element of chaos or randomness into that so that there's not a sense that it's kind of like I'm basically this is just a fancy way of pressing play do, yeah, do you know what I yeah. mean I just wonder I wonder if there's an element of uh, interaction beyond that I'm giving an, an instruction but and maybe my instruction is different from the other person who's who's come in there they're little Fine, so that it's still quite an individual experience but maybe the instruction that you're getting mm -hmm. is for the left-handed part of the dance, and somebody else gets the instruction for the right hand. And if you dance. do that by yourself, that's very different. And if you do that with a big room of people, yeah. that's going to be a very different experience. Yeah. So I suppose in that sense, you're, however many people are in the room, if they join in halfway, your experience is different, uh -huh. I suppose. For me, the thing with the mask, it kind of relates to both the things you like said. When you press the mask on, unless you're the only person in the room, you won't experience that put the mask on magical play well moment. what if what if there's multiple um i mean that's th there's still going to be a limit to how many things there can be but there could be maybe multiple projections as well so that you you know you put yours on and a singular figure appears yeah. someone else puts them on a singular figure appears so that the ball could the grow the more people there, are there. I, I think that's, that's really popular yeah. Yeah. I think that's really really interesting so, it difficult it depends how many projectors we technically have today. very difficult yeah. but the, the the other thing that I, I was wondering slightly do you mind if we move slightly away from maybe the mechanics of yeah. how we interact yeah. because I've got some questions about um, about uh, how how the room is presented so say it's something like this mm -hmm. kind of room. I'm not just kind of walking into a room and seeing a kind of like, oh, there's a film on that wall. Oh, and there's a film on that wall. Or how do you create a sense of, um, of the 3D environment? Mm. Do you do it by, or how, do, do you, have you thought about creating this kind of idea that, how do I see someone cross in front of me? Not just see someone kind of walking al along a wall there. Could, are you thinking maybe, uh, projecting onto cloth in the, uh, uh, gauze or something like that, which can create this kind of ghost-like quality mm -hmm. or something like that. If I kind of have, a, have this sense of like a projection happening there, I've got a sort of depth of field or something like that. There's limitations. It's a big square, so there's limitations because they don't want um, installations, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's really interesting and it reminded me of this little auditory thing that maybe one of the instructions should be to walk across the square or something like this. Uh, and then, um, Is this going to be like a full costume thing and then are the projections going to be... Know, yeah, the projections the should be like renaissance, so like, just, I mean, for this purpose of this one, maybe like some kind of long skirts and it's quite, you know, it's really lush with the corsets and all this stuff. Um, yeah, but they should be, they should feel different, I think, definitely. And even, you know, in terms of making the film, that the um, part of the environment can even be projected in the film. Maybe they have some kind of lushness in that, or a playing background, I'm not sure. But, yeah. Are they also wearing masks similar to some yes. what the audience are yes. wearing? Yeah, definitely. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> like a mini version of dressing up. Like uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Exactly. And you say it's to mark the, um, the Lost Palaces theme at Whitehall. Can you explain a little bit about that, that link? Is that like a commemorative project, the yeah. commission you're doing? Yeah, so it's, um, 
so actually this was the location also um, of the cockpit theatre, so Shakespeare performed there, and so it has this kind of amazing history, and, and these masks were part of the things that happen in this space, so just bringing back, like kind of raising up those ghosts from the dead again of what their actual building is is closed for repair, so they want to have something that they can have this kind of historical things that people can experience without having a physical space and technology is a really amazing way of doing yeah. that. Is we want to create as much as possible some kind of like yeah, bring that history to life, bring that era of the Which gives you some narrative ideas. Yeah. If you so choose to yeah. put any in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So projection is the only idea you presenting your ready made image or do you have any other thought? to presenting your idea to the audience, mm. rather than just showing some proje projection? Do you have any ideas? Yeah, it's limited um, because I don't want to have any installation in the space. So I want, to have, I want to do it all with things that you can have on your body. So with this mask, uh, with the projection, and with the audio device. Yeah. Um, why? Well, can I ask, like, why wouldn't you want to have, you know, actual representation of all these things? Um, well, first of all, I think it's because it's. I want it to be like kind of, yeah, ghostly. That it's okay. immaterial. It's, really it's immaterial. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and to activate people's imaginations, and um, then also just because you're not allowed to have installations in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> presented and how yeah. people relate to it. And I think it's, I don't know, in getting maybe a woman's perspective of that, of that time, of that history, because a lot of the, like the further back you go in history, the more women are erased, and mm -hmm. what is that voice that is missing, and what does she sound like, and all those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like what you find from the YouTube video, how was that passed on? Like where it's did that come yeah. from? Yeah, and it's written, it's passed down writtenly. So that's what I was thinking. So th these are all recreations that we see now. It's not like somebody, f it's not a direct pathway of teaching one to one. They've written these things down and do done kind of like you know stick figures and those kind of things. So that's how that information actually is passed. And so that I mean it is kind of authentic to give the um, those instructions to audience now because that. I mean, that could be as yeah. equally as valid a recreation because we really don't know necessarily what it would have looked like. It becomes that video whisper thing again. Yeah, it's Even a total, stick it's a total it's like video They might have done this, total but we're doing whisper. this. And yeah. yeah, I think that's a really interesting mm. process even for the creation period of like looking, writing, passing. Mm. How do you develop that dance and how does the choreography emerge? And, and the social side of that event, like why were they doing that? Are you wanting to recreate that or make a new kind of social event in this process? Yeah, I'm really interested anyways in my work about how people right now are relating to each other, similar to the social media project actually. I think that's why the idea of the texting came into play was like, what, how do you get people to come together again in public places and, and what, yeah, definitely what was the socialization around you know, all the circles and all the patterning and there's loads of stories about why why people touched in certain ways mm -hmm. and what different handholds mm -hmm. meant and all of that stuff and then what what has changed and like what mm -hmm. are what are social touches now and yeah. like yeah, yeah. yeah status like, does, total, does the prince total status yeah. have different movements to say whoever and like um so I was reading something recently about how um like the language of handshakes and how, like, if you're the CEO or the boss, or say, if you're the person interviewing someone, then it's you will shake their hand and you can put a second hand on there. But if you're like the interviewee, to do that is it's not it's not written anywhere that it's bad form, but it's kind of it does create a sort of it has a vibe of sort of subordination yeah. to it. And yeah, and uh, so that's totally really interesting. But, yeah. You know, so mm. maybe the A's are quite high status, yeah. and they can and it can say you know find someone with a blue mask and, you know, put your hand on top of yeah. things and the blue mask can be instructed to put their hands below, creating that yeah. sense that you are, I don't know how... And you talk about masks being about subversion as well. There's a lot to do with, they're used, like, traditionally in carnivals to, like, to have a day yeah. where, like, all the roles are yeah. subverted. Yeah. 
That's very interesting, sorry. Uh, no, no, which kind of features, I mean, which kind of dancers would you uh, engage thinking of Renaissance? Which sort of uh, dancers, specific features you're looking for? If you're talking about Renaissance. Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't know if this is exactly your question, but something that appeals is that the Renaissance dances are quite simple, you know, like that it's like step side to side, they're really tiny movements that things that you can do in huge ball gowns and stuff like that, so that, you know, it's quite easy to accomplish as a pedestrian, basically, because yeah. it's just stepping. Are these people going to dress up in ball gowns? No, no, well, the projection, <laughs> yeah. I think the projection is interesting, and then I was talking to another group about maybe, so the pedestrian, the audience, have like a blue mask and maybe the person that you, your projection that you activate also has a blue mask, so it's, it is you, it's related to you somehow, that you recognise yourself, but that, you know, as, a, as an audience you're not expected to dress up, but as on the projection, yeah, totally mm. lush and nice would be great.